Paint Six Fandango. Well, this is an interesting piece and quite a little workout with the fingers if you can get it right. But it's a lot of fun to play if you can get it right. Three four time, no sharps or flats, so it's either C major or A minor. And it starts out in C major. Look at the end, it ends in C, so I reckon we're in C major. Who knows it? Because it could go back and forth in the piece, and you don't know what's going on. We'll just see. Right hand first used to appear. One, two, three. One, two, three. And this fun. Second line. One and two in. Triplets. One and a two. Bring the thumb down. Let's go down to the uh, last two lines on page six. You want to rest, come up here. One and two. Rest, come down one. It's kind of like a sequence. We're figuring it's the same. They say one again. I don't like doing it. This is a fast piece. I don't want to use I don't want to use thumb like that. So I'm gonna cross over and use two, three, and then a one. So I'm not using thumb twice in a row. So the last two measures are the fourth line, you're here. You cross over. Here. So it's here, cross over, and then scrunch up and use two, and you're back to their fingering. Same thing on page seven. Uh, the last measure, the first line, you're here, and you cross over to and two. See, it's the same fingering. Left hand. Well, the left hand gets melody at first. One, two, three, one. One, two, and the cross, thumb down. It's okay. You can also do, do just reach down if you want. You don't have to cross over. Just keep in mind you got a wrist. You got to come down and use fifth finger again then for the chords. I'll leave that up to you on which fingering you use. I'm talking again. The first major, the second line, they have a one. They cross under. I don't like that. I can go here and then just reach down. But the next note is also fifth fingers. So maybe you don't want to do that either. I don't know. You have a rest. So whichever fingering you want to use. And for the most part, that's the left hand. Isn't that exciting? Well, the right hand's got so much going on, okay. So as you put the hands together, and again, we don't worry about hesitating right now. We just want the hands to work together. It's here, and here, and here, and then here, and then here, close together. You get the hands to work together. Let's go down to the last two lines on page six. You're here. Now we're on page seven. Second line, last two measures. You're here. And then it's as an 8VA over the top staff. So the right hand comes up here. I reckon two. You can do two here. If you can do one if you want. It's just, I just use thumb. I don't want to use thumb again. So I'm going to reach up and use two here. I could also do a two, three, five on those notes. It's just my choice. And now you have an ABA of top staff, so the right hand went up, the left hand stays where it is. And then you come back down. And you go up again, and this fun I do two. Go, does it? It's done here. And you got these. Now you can do it two on the A flat if you want. Doesn't that sound lovely? And you get so many of them too. And then the last note is C's here and here. And while I'm here, they added pedal on these. If you want to use pedal on these notes, put the pedal down right after you play the C and leave it down and lift it up when you play the staccato C here. I'm not going to show pedal in this if that's all they're going to do. 
but you can use pedal on those if you want to, I reckon. Now, once you get the hands working together and you get rid of the hesitation, so the beat is a nice steady beat at some speed, then we think about the articulation. Well, we have accents. There's a natural accent on the first beat of every measure anyway, but they want more than that, so you force this away. You can't play them legato on repeated notes. They're staccato automatically because they're disconnected. How short you are though, it doesn't say short though, so it's just... But that's a staccato in the second line. And then accent. And then you... So you're lifting up between these slurs but put in the accents as staccatos. And the left hand, I'm, I'm going to do an umchuk chuck here. It doesn't really say to, but I'm feeling it. And be careful on the first ending there. The left hand, it's four. Because you got to go up to here when you repeat. You go. So you got to be ready, so it's four. You don't really have to. You can do a two there and reach up. And then come use four. So it's a two or a four, either one. I'll leave that up to you. On the last two lines here. Staccato. You put in the articulation. Now, on these accents, I'm exaggerating them, at least here it sounds terrible, but the electronic equipment I'm using tends to even out the volume. So to get anything to sound different, I have to exaggerate it here and then it comes out a little better on the video. But these accents are not really strong accents, they're stronger accents than this. It's just an accent. So don't overdo these accents. Just Feel it one, two, three. You want this bum, 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 bum. Dynamic wise, loud. And that's going to be for the melody, although the first two measures are loud. But then when the left hand comes in, it's loud, and the right hand just gets softer. And then in the second line, when the left hand, or the right hand gets the melody, now it's loud, and the left hand is good. You're staying in that area. You don't have to stay exactly loud, but yeah, for the most part, it's going to be loud throughout the whole piece until at the end, you actually start getting louder. At the bottom, you go up to very loud. This gives the illusion of motion. We do this a lot with repeated notes in piano and music, really any instrument, is as you're playing the repeated notes, if you'll just gradually get a little louder, not a lot louder, a little louder, it gives the illusion it's going someplace. It's just not sitting there. It's like, what? You get just a... And you can actually start it a little softer to give you more room to grow if you want. So come down to maybe medium soft. I don't know about that, but... Uh, this first note's going to be medium loud. And then if you want to start a little softer... Try that and see if that... It, yeah, that's interpretation which is just a nice way of saying there's no right or wrong, you kind of do what you want. However, we, we have to follow what the music is saying, but the music isn't saying everything. There's a lot we can add to this. Then once you have a handle on that, then we add the fun part. Oh boy. And that is the speed. Well, Vivace is not just fast. Allegro is fast. Vivace, well, some say Allegro is happy. To me, Allegro is fast. Vivace is very fast. It's not as fast as you can, as there are, there are faster indications than Vivace, but Vivace is fast. And it's the overall flow of the piece. So these right hand, this... Uh, what can you do that accurately? That's, that's going to be your Vivace, whatever that is for you.
play it with you very slowly to just double check the notes and rhythms and all. Not going to do any dynamics. I'll do the accents and the staccatos and things, and we will do all the repeats and stuff. So I'll give us three counts. One, ready, go. Two, three.